Hey everybody, it's Eric from the MMG and I am very excited to be bringing you this video. I'm going to show you how to set up your very own satisfactory dedicated server. This is for Windows. Let's jump into it right now. Before I get started though, make sure you hit that follow and subscribe button. Any questions that you have, I will answer if you are a follower of our channel. If not, I might still answer it, but uh, you know, I'm going to stay focused on the followers for now because we're trying to grow this community and I need your help. All right, let's get into it. First thing we're going to do is go to Google and we're going to download Steam CMD because that's what we're going to use today. So just Google Steam CMD. It's going to be the very first link here. Looks like that. And then we're going to do it for Windows. So you want to click the Windows button right here and download right here. It's going to download for you. Hit the save file as hit OK. Then you're going to want to extract that and you're going to want to install that. I recommend that you put it uh, somewhere safe. Maybe create your own folder directly on your storage drive or your video game drive, whatever you want to do. If you look at mine here, I actually have mine stored directly onto my C drive and I made a folder called Steam CMD. It's what I did. So wherever you extracted yours, you're going to see a Steam CMD file run it. That's going to update Steam CMD by itself and download some files and populate your folder here for you. It's going to look very similar to what it's doing right here. And then once it's done, what we're going to do is type in login space anonymous. And then we want to hit enter. It's going to log you in anon anonymously. It's hard to say uh, into Steam CMD. Sometimes you have to log in with your own user account and you have to enter a password too. But uh, dedicated servers for uh, satisfactory does not require you to own the game, which is fantastic. It's waiting for client config. As soon as this is done, we're going to advance on to the next step. Now it's going to talk, stop you at a prompt like this. Now what we want to type in is app underscore update space. And then the ID for this dedicated server is 1690800. Then we want to hit enter. That's going to download the files for the dedicated server. It may take a little bit depending on your connection speed and everything else going on, but uh, we'll speed things up here for you. Once it is done downloading, it's going to look like this. And now you're done. You can actually close the Steam CMD window. So hit exit. You're not done, done, but that part's done. And now if you code to that folder wherever you put your Steam CMD, you should see a folder called Steam Apps. You want to go into it, go into common. And you should see a satisfactory dedicated server folder now. That's what you just downloaded. If you've downloaded other servers in the past, you'll see them there as well. Double click on that one. And now we're here at the main satisf satisfactory dedicated server folder. What we're going to do here is we're going to actually create a dot .bat that's going to actually launch the game. You, what you want to do is you want to right click and then hit new. You want to do a new text document. And I've named it like start server or something that you're going to know what it means. And you want to delete out the dot text and put a dot bat. And you should get a pop-up that says if you change a file name extension, the file might become unusable. Are you sure? You want to hit yes. Now, if you didn't do that and it's still, and now it says dot bat dot text, how you can fix that is you go up to your folder options here, click on view. Then you want to click on file name extensions, put a check mark there. Then you can edit the file name extensions within the name. All right, now we're going to go in and actually edit this file. You can do it with uh, just regular Notepad, or I always recommend Notepad++ if you have it, uh, which is what I'm going to use, actually. All right, and now what we want to do is we want to type in the, the basically the exe that you saw, which was factory server.exe. That's going to launch that, and then you want to hit space, put a dash, and a log that's going to log all the data from the server of what's happening uh you don't have to have it but it's useful then you want to put a space another dash and do unattended just like that and now you are good to go so you want to go file save close out your editor or whatever it is now and you should see your star server dot bat file see this uh, factory server dot exe that's that's what you're calling in this file all right, and if you want, I uploaded my start server.bat file to our website to make it easier for you if you're having issues with yours for some reason or you just want to make sure that you got all the text correct. If you go to our website, maturemindedgamers.com, there'll be a link in the description there, and then go to server files right here, 
then I do ask, this is my personal Dropbox, I do ask that you please subscribe to our YouTube channel or our Twitch channel before you uh, access our files just to, to help uh, support our channels. This is, I put a lot of work and effort into this and it uh, doesn't cost you a thing. Uh, once you have that done, you can come down and here's the satisfactory. Click on that. It's going to take you to the Dropbox, like I said, and here's the exact text. But what you can also do is you can just hit the download button right here and then hit save as and that will download the file for you. Now you do need to make sure you put it in the exact location where I had it in the video um, because I don't have it pointing to the location. It has to be in the same folder as the factory server.exe file. So just double click on it and you should start your server up for the very first time. You're going to see your commands you typed in there and this is what you want. This is it actually booting up the server and this could take a little bit. If it's the first time you've started the server, uh, be very patient. It can take a while for it to load because um, it depends on a lot of things like if you have everything set up right. So the other things that you need to do for this to work is you need to open some ports and this is going to have to be done in your firewall probably on your Windows machine, your Windows server here and also on your router. So there's two spots you're probably going to have to open ports. The, the Windows firewall which I actually have a video on how to do that I'm going to put a link below in the description watch that to get that done but for your router and firewall they're all done a little differently. And so what I recommend you do is you Google your model number of your router with how to open ports. And then you're going to hopefully find either a description or a video on how to do that. They're all just so different. If I showed you on mine, it's not going to do much good unless you have my exact model. All right. Now, when you have your server up and running and again, your ports are open correctly, you need to load Satisfactory up. You can connect through your Epic client or your Steam client. They will both connect to the Steam CMD server. You do need to make sure you're on the same version. Right now, only the experimental version has the server. Uh, that will change eventually when they move out of ex experimental, but you do need to always make sure that your server version and your client version are the same. And you can see that down here in the bottom right there. So what you need to do is go to Server Manager, and then you're going to actually hit Add Server, and you want to punch in the external IP address of your dedicated server. Now, if you are on the same LAN as your server, so as long as you're not, you know, obviously if you're hosting and trying to play on the same machine, that's going to be an issue. But say you have a dedicated server at your house that's connected to the same network as your computer that you're going to play off of, then you have to actually enter the internal IP address of the dedicated server. And so that's going to be, you, you're going to be able to find that in your router. And it's going to be like 192 something, something, something. Um, that, that will work, then you'll be able to connect to it right here. So that's how that will work. And then when you first get connected, like right here is my server. You're going to see it's going to pop up. It says you need to create or load a game before you can join it. So this is how you first do your, your initial setup of the server. The first player to connect to it gets to set it up. And so you're going to click on create game. You're going to pick your starting area here. You're going to name the game session. You're going to name ours MMG. Enable to join the game once the server is done loading. I mean, yes, you probably want to do that. Uh, you want to go to server settings. This is where you name it session name, you can change the admin password, you can set a player password, you can pause the game. So say you want to set a player password, that, that means to log into the server basically, right? There we go, set it, hit OK, and then um, not a lot of settings here. Here's where you can manage saves eventually when they get it done, and then the console when it's done, hopefully it'll be added in. Maybe it works, I, don't, I haven't tried it. But once you get all that set, go back to create game and then actually hit the create button game, or create game button. It'll take a second, be patient. Don't, and there it goes. Server is preparing a new game. So now it's communicating back and the, the server is actually making the game based off the settings that you just inputted. It shouldn't take too long, but it really depends on the, the server, like how much RAM and CPU and you have in it and stuff like that. But, you know, no matter what, if you're able to host this, the game, it shouldn't take too long here. And again, if you're, if you're getting a no connection or you're not finding it in your server and you're trying to add it, your ports on your firewall your Windows firewall are probably not open or your router's firewall probably not open. You have to open them both. As you can see, it finished. And then since I had that little checkbox, it automatically is connecting me. And we are now in our server. That is how you connect. And if you want to delete your world save, you need to go to whatever file uh, is your main directory. So mine C, you need to go into the users folder because this saves in the whatever user you're logged into and running the server from in your app data folder, which is a hidden folder. If you can't see it, you have to go up to view and hit uh, the hidden folder checkbox right here, hidden items. And then you'll be able to see app data. And then you want to go into local and then you'll find factory game. 
and then here is your saves right here in the save folder you can go into it save games and then there's your servers and there's the mmg auto save that's where you'll actually get rid of if you want to delete your world so all you have to do is delete the actual server folder right here there you are good to go all right everybody i appreciate you watching the video i hope it helped you i hope you're as excited as i am for satisfactory i need your support though make sure you subscribe to our channel to help us keep growing Thanks for watching. Have yourself a great day.